Hello, I'm Joel Slemrod. I'm Professor of Economics in the Economics Department and the Ross School of Business and Director of the Office of Tax Policy Research. Thanks for all your fascinating questions on Facebook and YouTube. I've selected a few of them that I'll try to answer today. First one comes from John on Facebook and he says that many people think Reaganomics worked in the 1980s. Would it work again now? It's a great question, but there were, different, there were three different Reagans uh, during his presidency with respect to tax policy. And the first Reagan, right after he was elected, uh, had a big across-the-board tax cut. But then a year or two later, with looming deficits related to the tax cuts, during the Reagan presidency, taxes actually went up. And then finally, the third Reagan was in 1986 when he championed a revenue-neutral tax reform that broadened the tax base and lowered tax rates. So the question is, uh, do we want any of these three Reagans, or, or do we want a fourth tax policy? And I think, given that what's different now, which is that we have huge deficits and huge debt, we want a Reagan number four, which is a tax reform that lowers tax rates and broadens the tax base, but also raises some revenue along with cutting back on entitlements. Next question comes from Vincent. He said, some Republicans have suggested that cutting taxes across the board would force entitlement reform and other spending cuts and would reduce the budget deficit. Will that work? This uh, strategy uh, is sometimes called starve the beast. The idea is that by cutting taxes, the fear of deficits and the real consequences of deficits will force Congress and the President to cut back spending. The ultimate objective of this idea, the starve the beast strategy, is to make government smaller and the tax cuts are really a tactic to get the smaller government. The problem with the starve the beast strategy is that it doesn't work and the best evidence for my statement that it doesn't work is the administration of George W. Bush. Uh, President Bush came in and cut taxes quite significantly, but during his administration, spending didn't go down. In fact, it went up substantially, partly due to the wars that were unanticipated, but also due to the biggest expansion of entitlement spending since Medicare, and that's the prescription drug uh, benefit that was added during his uh, administration. So the tactical use of tax cuts to starve the beast just hasn't proven to be effective, even if we agree that we should make government smaller. Next question comes from Kevin. Kevin says he thinks that the best tax idea of all is to get rid of all the current federal taxes and replace it with a single national retail sales tax. He asks whether I agree that that's a good idea. Well, Kevin, it would certainly be simpler to have one national retail sales tax than the federal income taxes and other federal taxes we have now. That's pretty clear. The problem is that Doing so would be a radical reshuffling of the tax burden. Low-income people would have a much higher tax burden than they do now, and high-income people would have a much lower tax burden than they have now. Some supporters of a national retail sales tax want to offset that a bit by having what they call a prebate, a, a payment that's the same for everyone that goes out to all households. That would offset the burden on low-income people a bit, but would still mean a pretty big tax cut for high-income people. Imagine a national retail sales tax of 30 or 40 percent, which is the rate we would need to replace the revenue from federal taxes. Imagine the pressure on retailers who generally have a gross margin of 1 to 2 percent. This would not enforce itself, and evidence an experience from other countries suggests it would not be so simple. Another question comes from Mario. Mario asks do, whether I foresee the country improving the tax code via bipartisanship and being able to make progress with the debt our children will inherit. Mario, you're absolutely right that we face a very big long-term fiscal imbalance. Looking over the next several decades, the spending we have in place 
exceeds the taxes we have in place by over 50 trillion dollars. Most of that is due to Medicare and Medicaid, but some of it is due to Social Security. So unless we make changes in the, both the tax system and the entitlement programs, uh, things don't look good. Uh, do I s foresee that uh, we as a country will deal with this? Almost certainly not in 2012. I think there's no chance that the Republicans and Democrats will get together to address this problem. It's also hard to see how we're going to reconcile the very, very different views that Republicans and Democrats now have on these issues. One really unfortunate development, I think, is that at least so far in the presidential campaign, really no candidate has taken it upon himself to lay out a plan that would address this huge fiscal imbalance looking forward. Thanks for all those great questions. I'm um, sorry I couldn't answer all of them. Some of those questions are answered, though, in my book called Taxing Ourselves, which you can get from MIT Press or Amazon. Um, Stay tuned for further Ask M programs that are coming soon.